Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Drew Galloway here on a Monday with a lot going on in the world of K State athletics. Number one being that there is a basketball game tomorrow. Number two being that football is not very fun right now. And Drew, I have a question just right off the top for you because has football been fun at any point this season for K State? I, I asked that, and some people might laugh, and I'm, I promise you I'm not trying to be Denzel Washington and, and remember the Titans here. But thinking through the season, when you think about the games that K-State has played, and this probably also is a credit and, and to some extent and has a lot to do with the positioning that, of the program and where Chris Kleiman has it, but obviously game number one, there's really not going to be anything fun about the opener against an FCS opponent. Those just – are what they are game two you go on the road and instead of you know trying to handle your business against um you know a g5 school you're in a dog fight it looks like you might lose um certainly the way that you won that game is fun making that play the way you did but it was really more stressful i don't know that people walked out of it feeling good i think maybe the only point in the season where people were having fun was when k-state trounced arizona on a Friday night. Now we look back and we see how that goes. But ever since then, it's a, a you know vomit inducing loss at BYU. Uh, yeah. Okay. You handled Oklahoma state. They also suck. And then Colorado, you blow a two score lead in the second half. Now fun in the end to hit the bomb to Jace Brown. And that's when it felt like things might be going in the right direction. But again, I think there were things that you come out of that and you go, that was more stressful than it was fun. And sometimes the stress can be fun. Like I think of 2012 and I think of that Oklahoma game, like the stress in that game was fun. 2011, the Miami game, the stress in that game became fun, but it's because the expectations weren't necessarily to a certain level yet. And now as we continue through the season, the West Virginia game was kind of ho-hum. And that's again, not fair to K-State because you dominated a team, but what are you going to do? They're bad. You should have beaten them. And then the KU game, I'm not sure anybody had fun until a minute after the game, and you could rub it in the the faces of your your KU friends or whoever. And then obviously last weekend was zero fun for anybody. So, Drew Galloway, are you having fun this football season? Yes, because even though it feels like the sky is falling, KC is still 7-2. And, and like, I, I don't really care how it looks as long as you keep winning. And, and like last week or Saturday was just the epitome of not fun because it was pouring wet weather. We were there. It's that's that had probably the most rain that I've seen at a K State game outside of the Missouri State game that got uh, canceled at halftime, uh, just with how wet it was coming down. And then K State doesn't play well. So, like last week, or it was just the epitome of not fun, but everything else. K State seven and two. They're still going to be ranked in the first college football playoff poll tomorrow. They still beat KU. They handled really bad teams. They won in a fun way at Colorado. I, I don't know. I, I, I find winning fun, and K State has done a lot more winning than losing. The, the two losses have been like so not fun that it probably like cancels out how much fun that the the wins have been. But I, I don't know. I, I, I come away from this and like the, the further that we get away uh, from the Houston game, like, yes, it was insanely frustrating. Yes. That's again, that K-State has to win. But at the same time, like the sky isn't falling. Nobody needs fired. Nobody needs to transfer. K-State played one bad game. It's they're seven and two. They still, they need a little bit more help now to get to the big 12 championship game. But if they get help, and it just takes Colorado losing one time and K-State winning out, so it's really no different than if they would have won the game. It just feels worse because of who they lost to. But I think that the bye week comes at a good time and everybody can kind of regroup collectively, not just as like the the players, but I think fan base, us, and can kind of like look back and be like, okay, th- this team is seven and two. Like they they're a pretty good team. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't want it to confuse like winning is good and all that, and, and 
I think the last two seasons really haven't been that fun of K-State football. And I say that from the standpoint of kind of what you mentioned there. K-State is, for the most part, beating who they should beat. They didn't on Saturday. And then, and as we know, those games were blowouts uh, last season. Pretty much the same this year outside of Tulane, really. Um, and then, you know, KU, you can you can say whatever it is there. But again, I kind of go back to it, it was a rivalry or whatever. Uh, but then, you know, BYU, like you lay an egg there. The Houston thing happens. Um, and last year, you didn't get a win over a team that you felt like you maybe should have. Um, Oklahoma State, you could have done it there. Texas, you could have done it there. Missouri, you could have done it there. Iowa State, I mean, that was probably the worst loss of the season for K-State. I, I just, I think it's this new era of college football where the way the Big 12 sets up, K-State is expected and they have the ingredients to be better than what they have this year, which sounds crazy to say because they're seven and two, but you were just kind of getting to the point where you could kind of erase the BYU loss and feel like, okay, we can get past that. You can, you can be allowed one hiccup. Well, K-State got rid of their hiccups and all of a sudden they said, let's chug a bunch more water and they got the hiccups back. And now these ones aren't going to go away for a long time because uh, you've got a bye week on your hand. And, and once again, K-State has uh, a bye week uh, that they're going to have to ask some serious questions over. I, I, I am with you on this, though. Anybody that is wanting to just blow this whole thing up is absolutely out of their mind um, and downright ridiculous. I, I mean, I reading a lot of the posts on KSO on Saturday night and into Sunday and still the ones that are going out on, on Monday. Boy, Jerome Tang and the basketball team needs to save everybody with a 40-point win tomorrow night. Uh, and, and Coleman Hawkins, Doug McDaniel, and Max Jones need to each have 25 points because there is some lunacy out there right now. Avery Johnson is not a problem. Chris Kleiman is not a problem. Connor Riley is not a problem. Do these individuals and others on this team have things that are problematic and that they need to get better about? Yes, but everybody has that. And there's a reason why if you look around college football, not every team goes undefeated every year. Not every team only has one loss every single year. Losses happen, and unfortunately, they are more common in leagues where there isn't as big of a talent differential um, and, and that's, I mean, that's going to continue to be a thing in the big 12. What TCU did in 2022 is a bit of an anomaly. That is not going to be the norm every year in the big 12. What you don't, you don't think that beating every team's quarterback up to the point that they can't play isn't a very sustainable yeah. model. Cause that's yeah. all the 2022 TCU team essentially did. And, and yeah, that's why, I think and, so. and, and that's why like, I look at this and, I know that they're still undefeated and just had their second bye, but I don't think that BYU goes into the Big 12 championship game undefeated either. There just isn't that big of a differential between teams now, and, and that's just going to be how how it goes. And you're going to have frustrating games where you do lay an egg, and K-State did lay an egg. I mean, I, I think that that was probably the most negative instant reaction I've had for a football game <laughs> probably ever. And, and I kind of laid into them a little bit on the Sunday show. Like it, it was a bad game, but the the reality is when you kind of step away from it, bad bad games happen. It, like it, it, it is, can you survive your clunkers? And for a little bit, it looked like K State was going to. And, and I and I'll say this too: K State doesn't lose back to back games super often, and a lot of times they beat that other team to hell after that they just lost. So Arizona State has been hot recently. But you kind of look at that game next week, and you know that it's going to be a night game now. Mm -hmm. That that's a game that it feels like K State could could kind of get right. But that that's another one where you just need to win it and move on. But yeah, to, to answer how much fun am I having? I don't know. Like it, it's just such a for me. I always just find wins fun because then you kind of avoid all this like negative talk that has kind of happened over the last. 72 hours it's like for us any kind of win i think is a good thing and it like keeps everybody more engaged everybody's yeah. happier but now it's like ugh. 
the bye week though, I think does come at a really good time because Casey needs to figure out how to run the ball more effectively. And they also just need to kind of figure things out internally because I think that there are some things that happened Saturday that have just been repeatedly happening over and over again. And I don't know if a personnel change is needed at some spots or it's how can we just scheme around this? So, because we know it's going to happen. So how can we fix that? But I, I'm not hitting the panic button. I'm, I might be the crazy one, but I, I'm not really panicked at all. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not hitting a panic button, but I am making some calls and getting some things in order uh, in regards to the running situation because I've I've talked about this all season. The the first indicator that something could be wrong with the run game is the fact that all year when K State is inside the ten yard line, they can't run the football like you would want to. They have to get very creative, and that's why we've seen so much of the tight ends this year and everything that they've done around there. The offensive line has struggled this year in run situations where it's short yardage. And, and Fan talked about this, I can't remember if it was last week or, or even this past weekend, where he he noted that, you know, in their power situations, the, the offensive line has been poor. And now it is stretched into, for some reason, they can't run at all. Uh, and then you think about yet, uh, Saturday, makes it a lot easier for Houston to – totally devote everything to the run because in the second half, those were not throwing the football conditions. Like I was holding a video camera the entire time. There was nothing that I was going to be able to do to keep that thing dry. There was nothing I could do to keep my hands dry in that situation. And even if you thought you were drying them off, you were just drying it off with a slightly less wet towel or whatever else out there. So that's why when K-State has to throw the ball 39 times in that situation and Houston only does it 12, that's where your biggest issue comes from. Uh, the offensive line absolutely let K-State down on Saturday. Now, there are a lot of other areas that let K-State down, and we talked about that in the Sunday show, which I would implore everybody to go back and listen to. It's up on the, the KSO podcast platforms right now. The video version of that will be up uh, later this evening. It didn't go up. Uh, initially because the uh, hotel Wi-Fi was pretty terrible. But I just, this is, uh, K-State has to go out there and provide some excitement and provide some fun to this season. It hasn't happened to this point in time. And it'll be interesting now moving forward if they're able to turn it around. Because if they went out, then that totally changes the complexion of the season. You finish the regular season 10-2. and two, you are in all likelihood in Arlington. We, outside of Colorado winning out, there is not really a scenario we've found yet that's realistic where K State does not play for the Big 12 title. So, for the most part, everything that K State wants to accomplish is still out there. It is still available, but they have to actually go out and make it happen. And we'll see if they can because the run game has to be figured out. That is a very big priority. Even for teams that running the ball is not priority number one, they still have to be able to be confident that in running situations, they can go to it. And that's the reason why K-State lost on Saturday. Chris Kleiman and Connor Riley were not confident that in a running situation with the lead late in the game, horrible wet weather, they didn't think that they could be trusting their offensive line to run the football. That's why they had to throw it. That's why Avery Johnson threw an interception that gave Houston the ball at the nine-yard line, it it all kind of works together. Could Avery Johnson have been better? Yes. Uh, you can't throw those interceptions in that situation. But again, if you're Chris Kleiman and Connor Riley, you probably shouldn't be asking your quarterback to throw the ball in that situation. And like we talked about on Sunday, if you are, do not be throwing those passes that have to be so specific and fine with their timing in shorter yard situations to where a greater likelihood of something going really wrong happens because there's a difference between throwing an incompletion 20 yards down the field or an interception 20 yards down the field versus throwing something into traffic where like we talked about the DBs are still coming up to get their receivers that they're, they're supposed to be on. The linebackers are right there. There's a lot more that can go wrong in that situation. So um, again, you can, you can blame Connor Riley and Chris Kleiman. They deserve it. 
uh, for that game. They certainly do, but uh, you can also understand where they were coming from because they couldn't trust their offensive line, and that's the bigger problem, especially with a bunch of guys that, while there hasn't been as much game experience together, they have experience uh, in terms of how long they've been playing college football. So they had to be better. They weren't, and they let K-State down on Saturday as well as just disastrous from special teams. Yeah, I, I think that there's just a lot of places where K-State needs to get better, and they can use this bye week to get better at those things, number one, and number two, just get healthier. I, I question how healthy a few guys are on the roster right now. I like that. I think that has kind of limited them. Uh, one of the guys that I kind of question how healthy he really is it is DJ Giddens. Yeah. It, it, it has looked like pretty much post Colorado game that he's just kind of a, sl- a step or two slower. Even though than, than you, you think about the last third of that game against Colorado where he wasn't in as much, they were having, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. So I, I think that, that the buy is probably good for him. I think that the buy is good for Avery to kind of reset a little bit because he had the injury against Colorado. And I don't want to say that he hasn't really looked the same since because he's he's been pretty solid in, in these last few games. But I think that more time to kind of see everything again. And, and then I, I just think that you are at a point in the season where a lot of guys just have a lot of like minor injuries and you want to get them healed up and ready to go for the Arizona state game next week. But I I don't know. I I just think that the, the more that we get away from the Houston game and I I don't know if this is just more of me kind of coming from the perspective of not really being so like entranced as a fan anymore, but I'm like, okay, you look around uh, I said on the Sunday show, like 38% of the games on Saturday ended in an, up, in an upset. There isn't a, like, this team is so much better than everybody else, even in the Big 12, that I'm like, okay, every team is probably going to have a little a stinker. And it does suck that it happened against Houston, and it sucked that it happened against BYU. But I, I just don't think that any team is really, like, not susceptible to that. So this whole, like, Oh, is this like an indicative thing of the program? No, I think that's just how college football is. And that there are less and less what I would call elite teams now than ever before. And the season is still right in front of K-State to go grab. And this is the other take that I'll have, and I'll stand on this until, until I die. If K State goes ten and two and doesn't make it to Arlington, that's still a good season. Like that, that's just a that's yeah, a product yeah. Of what, that's a product of being in a sixteen team league now, and you probably got screwed by tie breakers, or you just didn't really help yourself by not being well, Houston, but ten yeah. in the regular season. Yeah, it, it's going to be easy to say, "Hey, take care of business, take down Houston." But think, I mean. Uh, we we can do this this exercise uh, fairly easily, but think about even going back to the Big Twelve champs a decade plus ago. Like Oklahoma State went twelve and one, they beat Stanford in the Fiesta Bowl, they won the Big Twelve. Their only loss was in double overtime at Iowa State, who went six and seven that season. Um, not good. As everybody is well aware, K-State lost one game in the regular season in 2012, and it came against the Baylor team that was four and five in Big 12 play that year. Uh, they went seven and five, and it wasn't until they ended up getting their uh, eighth win in the Holiday Bowl uh, uh, against UCLA. So, like, we can keep doing it. Bad, good teams lose to bad teams every once in a while, um, including those in their heyday. It just it's something that happens. Think about Georgia. like Matt Campbell's first year. They, he took Iowa State on the road and they beat Oklahoma in Norman. Like that was not a good Iowa State team with Kyle Kemp and Joel Lanning running around, but they did it. It happens. What the killer ends up being in these massive leagues now is there will be a little bit more parity, and it is going to be so schedule dependent because. 
K State going on the road and getting the win at Colorado should not be taken for granted. Um, not just because of how K State won it, but the fact that they were able to do that. When you look at how Colorado's playing now, and the fact that that's one of the tougher games that is going to be on a team's schedule this year in league play. Initially, we didn't think that going to BYU was anything, but then you see what BYU is now. We're in November and they still haven't lost. And in addition to that, we now know uh, in the Big 12 what kind of dynamic a night game in Provo can be, which uh, once again, BYU getting a night game uh, in Provo, I saw uh, next weekend when they when they face KU. So uh, the, the TV partner is also helping the BYU Magic carry forward and everything else. But, but you, you also it, look at Colorado's schedule, they, and they've played two Big 12 teams with a winning record that aren't K-State so far. And, yeah. and, one, and one of those teams was, ba- was Baylor, who – up until last week or the last three weeks, we thought that they were probably going to be a team that was done winning the rest of the year. So you kind of look at it. Colorado has kind of had a little bit of schedule magic so far this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just, it's one of those things where it's, it's not to justify it. Cause again, K-State should not have lost to Houston. They should not have lost that game once they were in it, but they did. And now you just kind of got to fight through, get over it, and uh, see if you can make something happen the rest of the season. They certainly can, but they got to fix the run game in in some way. All right, before we shift gears and we talk a little bit of basketball here on this Monday, I want to remind everybody that uh, we can also still think about football next season and get everything in order as the Cats get ready to head overseas, and that's because the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. All right, uh, you got to go listen to Jerome Tang speak today. Not a ton of substance to what he had going on, but uh, what is the overall status and state of K State basketball heading into their opener tomorrow night against New Orleans? Yeah, I think the the biggest note is that K State should be fully healthy going into the game. It sounds like Max Jones will be ready to go after missing the exhibition game uh, last week against Fort Hayes State. Uh, the only thing that is kind of up in the air is that a Chor had a family emergency and had to go home for that. Uh, he should be back in Manhattan probably about any time now, uh, but it's kind of up in the air on if he will be able to uh, play and kind of get up to speed for New Orleans. Uh, and I, I just think that that's a big deal because you you never want to see a guy that you kind of everybody expected to start for K-State in, in a boot for the exhibition. So just get Max Jones healthy, I think, is a big deal. And then... This is a little bit of coach speak, but I think that there is something to this because I, I said this after the exhibition game is that it, it takes a little bit for everybody to kind of get acclimated in, in a game setting. And, and Jerome Tang said that uh, today that he that they get to find out tomorrow how many minutes that they think that they can kind of play the, the way that they want to because he said the last the last game that they didn't play very many that they really wanted to be able to. And tomorrow is another chance to kind of see what it is and that he doesn't want them playing probably their peak basketball tomorrow where he wants that to happen in like February or March, which. Well, you you don't need your peak basketball to make it look like you played your peak basketball against New Orleans. So that's that's how I'd phrase it. Yeah. So like I, I think that it's more of like he wants to see more focus and intensity tomorrow than he did for the Fort Hayes State game, which is something that we talked about. And, and then uh, the final thing that he really kind of talked about that kind of stuck with me was uh, just kind of how they're going to incorporate different lineups because he said that he thinks that they have probably nine guys that are in that capability of being able to start a game and that he wouldn't reveal what the starting lineup was. And he, I think that it might, vary for the first month or so because he said he doesn't want any of his guys to get too comfortable because he thinks that they have a lot of good competition and and that kind of just goes with the the fact that we said that this team has a lot of good depth and a lot of guys that can play multiple positions and they have a lot of versatility 
so I, I think it's just good to hear that again, uh, kind of going forward for the season opener. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be nice to have Mac Jones out there because I think what the possibility of what Max brings to uh, K State is that I do think that there is some leadership and also th his skill set and ability uh, would have helped them kind of give us a better preview of what they might actually be in that game against Fort Hayes State. But I think having him out there will help. I also think, just like most situations, the lights being on for real and knowing that even though it's a, a pretty similar tier of opponent to Fort Hayes State in, in all seriousness, um, it helps to know that the game actually counts and actually matters, uh, and you might get guys to be a little bit more locked in. I think K-State will, will be ready to go, and I think they'll have a pretty easy time tomorrow. And it should be noted how important it is to do that because so much of the talk last year was how everybody was gaming Ken Palm and uh, the net and all this. Like You want your efficiency numbers. Everybody's talking about efficiency, whether you're talking about net, which – the NCAA selection committee will use or Torvik or Ken Palm or whoever else you want to trust out there. Uh, everybody thinks you get your big boost by beating the crap out of really bad teams. And that certainly helps. Uh, so if, if you think that's what you're doing here by having this type of schedule, you got to go out and do it uh, when you play a, a bad team like new Orleans. I mean, Iowa state, the Kings of it, they're going to get their shot at Mississippi Valley state tonight. Uh, the Delta devils who K state will be playing uh, later on this season, which, by the way, they are the uh, dead last Ken Palm team to start the season, if you're taking a peek at how all that plays out. So uh, it's this is just a, a ho-hum game for K-State. You got to make it that way, though. Uh, and you can't have a Chicago State. You can't have an Oral Roberts or whatever, because if so, then you do have some real problems on your hands, and I will seriously adjust what my expectations for this team are. But I think... They've got the players. They've got the coaches. I think this is going to be a really good basketball team. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that K-State handles their business tomorrow and probably wins by that like 25 to 30 range. Do the Cats score 100 points tomorrow? No. I'll say – I'll even say that the women's basketball team uh, today probably scores more than K-State does tomorrow. Okay, the K-State women scored 92 today. In a 92 to 45 win. Um, let's go and look here. So last year's team for New Orleans, mm, they gave up 96 to Oklahoma State early in the season. Okay, we might have to do a little bit of adjusting. That would be a fun. And, and that, that O State team was pretty bad. That that is a fun question. Do the women score more than the men? Uh, the only time it looks like. New Orleans gave up 100 points last year was to McNeese, 102 to McNeese. They gave up 97 to Minnesota as well. So when they played high major teams, um, that's how it worked out. That, that that does sound about right because with how Jerome Tang talked about, like he just talked to, like in general about New Orleans and that they like to press and get after you and try and speed you up a little bit. So that that is the kind of thing that could lead to KC getting to 100. But I'll say that they ended with like, 89 or 90. Well, the hope would be since you weren't able to play some of the uh, end of the bench against Fort Hay State, you're able to do it against New Orleans. Yeah. We'll see, though. We'll see. We'll see how it ends up going. Uh, all right. That'll do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have an instant re reaction after K-State faces New Orleans in basketball. And uh, be on the lookout for the full video version of the Sunday show coming your way. You can listen to it right now, though, over on Spotify, Apple, wherever else you get your podcast. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vogue. Thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online. You can always find us over at On3.